biggest name in football right now is in York to try to reverse the biggest upset in football. Eric Cantona and Manchester United have a giant task here at Booth and Crescent. Three goals down after that astonishing first leg two weeks ago. York City's fans have got the Coca-Cola taste. They're looking towards round three now, and no wonder, after the second division team took the game to their premiership opponents at Old Trafford. Now United's famous names are back. It's a big night. It's a little bit special, and it's really nice. I think, uh, I think more important for us, the people of York, you know, and to, uh, to do some special for them on the night and make sure we win for them. How much belief have you you can finish the job? A lot of belief. Uh, we've got three goal cushion. Um, they've got to really come at us. Uh, I'm sure we'll get chances tonight to win the game. 9,000 fans packed in. Tickets were like gold dust, but we've acquired two for Ian St John and John Hell. Thanks, Nick. For the second time in just over 48 hours, the spotlight falls on the Enfant Terrible. The last time Eric played in Yorkshire, he scored against Sheffield United, the last match before his infamous Kung Fu exploits at Selhurst Park. Cantona has persuaded Alex Ferguson that he's fit to play from the off tonight, and this is an attack-minded side, as you'd expect, with the likes of Andy Cole, Ryan Giggs and Paul Scholes raring to go in the quest for goals. Out to stop them, 19-year-old Andy Warrington, who makes a fairy tale debut in place of the unfortunate Dean Kiley, who suffered horrendous facial injuries at Hull on Saturday. This is basically the side that won national fame at Old Trafford, except for Warrington and Paul Atkin, who takes the place of Graham Murty out with a hamstring problem. The life of a referee is varied and exciting these days. Chef Winter will be officiating a cup tie between Middlesbrough Post Office and Great Ayton on Saturday, and he then flies off for a midweek fixture between Slovenia and the Ukraine. By my reckoning, this Manchester United lineup costs £16,635,000. million six hundred and thirty-five thousand pounds. York City's, including one of the substitutes, cost sixty-five thousand pounds. But who's to say what the result might be? You won't have to re remind Manchester United and Alex Ferguson about what happened two weeks ago. They have got to lay uh, an early assault on the York City goal. The longer the game goes without Manchester United scoring, the harder it's going to be for them. And Alan Little's message was clear to his players, just do the same for me as you did at Old Trafford. And Lee Sharp concedes a free kick straight away on Darren Williams. I think, uh, Saint, that uh, Alan Little is right to say that it's no good just sitting back and letting Manchester United come at them. You want to keep Manchester United as far away from your goal as possible, and I think Alan Little is right in that one. This is Wayne Hall, now he's left-footed, so we assume he's going to swing this one in towards Peter Schmeichel. Pepper and Atkin have gone into the penalty area to supplement the uh, the Raiders, and Schmeichel, it was an awkward punch for him, nudged back in by Williams, headed out by Pallister. And the best early moment coming for York City. Oh, and a slip here, might let in Andy Cole, just what York didn't want, and Warrington makes a save, he just got a touch to that, and the ball is scrambled out for the corner kick by Steve Tuttle, though he stayed down, and that might be a problem for the, uh, for the York City skipper. Well, terrible mistake, but the conditions, you know, are very, very wet. We've had a real downpour before the game. Cole maybe should have done better there, but the goalkeeper did well, but Tuttle hits the post. Absolutely, Andy Cole, uh, credit the goalkeeper, it could have gone anywhere. Tuttle made sure it didn't go into the net. Early drama then, Andy Cole with a great opportunity there for Manchester United after McMillan's slip. When Andy Warrington got a hand to that one, John, it was a... I don't know if it was going in the net or not, but the big goalkeeper managed to get his hand to it. Well, they say of Andy Warrington that he's got uh, good technique and good temperament, which is absolutely vital for a 19-year-old coming into a test like this one. There's Brian Kidd, active already on the Manchester United bench. And Tuttle still receiving attention from Jeff Miller as Giggs takes a poor corner. He's got a second chance to play the ball in, and that he takes, and the header wide was from Cole. He's had two chances in the opening two minutes. Well, I think they've stated their intentions, Manchester United, obviously. They, they have got to take the game to York City, and after a first bad corner kick, it was a lovely ball back in there, and a good header. He gives his second ball a lot better than his first. Oh, it was a lovely ball. Great night for any manager, Alan Little and Paul Stancliffe alongside him. 
They've had their own cup exploits as players, but it's very different when you're sitting on the bench and can do nothing about it. has got the sort of kick it could go from one end of the field right through to the other it's not the biggest ground in the football league this by any means and the Manchester United players will feel a little confined after Old Trafford it's reasonably away John I think it's about 75 yards away uh, lengthwise it doesn't seem to be too long but uh, it's a big enough surface and I think uh, the players will enjoy playing in this tonight because the surface really is wonderful yes a lovely turf uh, the last time I was here uh, it was underwater, totally underwater. That's gone through, and Cole, Warrington off his line. Cole squeezes the cross in, and that's a nervous moment for the young goalkeeper. But he's got away with it for the time being. Cantona. Good ball in, a great chance here. Oh, it's there! And Paul Scholes gets the early goal for Manchester United that York City were dreading. He's a terrific little striker, this fellow. Joy on the faces of Manchester United supporters. It's now 3-1 on aggregate. And Paul Scholes moving swiftly. Cantona, Scholes in the net. Beautifully taken by Scholes because when the ball was played in here by Cantona, who picked him out, just watch for the first touch here of Scholes. It was really was very impressive. Took it past the defender and whacked it in. Four goals uh, with five goals now this season. Becomes top scorer for United. Good jump by Barrett. And here's Barnes to apply a little bit of pressure again on that Manchester United defence. Oh, and he's caught from behind badly by Beckham. And Mr. Winter was right there. He was no more than a couple of feet away. There's Beckham on Barnes. Well, actually, I thought he got the ball. He, he slid in almost from the side edge or knocked the ball away. I don't think that really was a foul at all. The problem is you can't tackle from behind, Saint, can you? No, but I didn't think it was from behind. I thought it was more from the side. And I think if you'd look at it, you would see that he actually slid in and got the ball. A yellow card for David Beckham. And it's a free kick to York City. Nigel Pepper will deliver. Straight on to the head of Pallister, though. taken nicely down in his stride by Cole <laughs> Alistair everybody's inside the York half now Giggs first time and a brilliant ball for Cole oh, he should have done so much better with that what a wonderful ball it was angled in by Ryan Giggs. Oh, delightful ball that one, wasn't it? I mean, he just played it first time as it came to him. There we are, left foot, and it was just, I think, spinning a little bit, and probably that's what took it away from Cole. He's looking very sharp tonight, I must say, Andy Cole. So, two. Well, he looks like he didn't have much hope in the air against... Alistair and Bruce. So you think uh, they've got to keep the ball on the deck for Barnes and Peveril. Scholes has angled another ball in here for Andy Cole to chase. And he might have to hold it up until one or two arrive in the middle. And they are arriving, and here's a second goal, surely. And it is scored for Manchester United. And they are right back in this tie now, thanks to Terry Cook and his first goal for the club. Oh, what a time to score it. I think it might even have been his first kick. I mean, there's a lovely ball there in the first place for Cole. And I was saying how sharp he was looking tonight. 
and he left uh, all the defenders trailing in his wake. A nice run by Giggs, the cut back there, a slip by a defender, and there was Cook with a cheeky ball. 2 0 in 12 minutes, and who would bet against Manchester United now? Giggs, Terry Cook, and a lovely time to score your first goal in senior football. He's only 19 years of age, he comes from Marston Green. He had an outstanding Premier League debut the other week against Bolton, and now he's got his first Manchester United goal. Manchester, Manchester United defending with consummate ease there. And the cross came Tony Barris that time. A lovely pass, Skulls just knew where Neville would be and there are three in the middle waiting if Neville delivers a decent cross here and Paul's going to boot that one away by Skulls for Manchester United. York not able to get out their own half at the moment. Skulls goes on. A lovely one-touch football here from uh, Manchester United. And still the opportunities here to get a decent cross in. And it will go behind. It is a corner, this... I think there's a booking here. Yes, there is. It's, it's Nigel Pepper. I'm not quite sure why. Well, that's a mystery. I didn't see anything, John. It was a, it was a lovely build-up by Manchester United, and maybe during that build-up, he went in and put his foot in, and, and we didn't notice it. Anyway, it's a corner. It's another poor one. That's uh, two shocking corners that have been delivered from that side by Giggs. Nobody, you see, for York to give the ball to out of their own half. Well, the crowd drooling at the quality of that pass out to Beckham. And then Cantona knocks another one in onto the head of Barris. Pepper now, and he's onside here, Peveril. And he'll swing the ball in, here comes Paul Barnes. Oh, that might be such a critical moment in the match. Paul Barnes, given the opportunity with a lovely ball in from Peveril, strikes the Manchester United upright. And it looks as though Schmeichel got a touch. I think Schmeichel did get a touch. That was a lovely first-time shot there, and that was a great save, really, by Schmeichel. This would have changed the game yet again. Oh, they badly needed a goal at this point, John. And look how close they came. It's a lovely bit of football from York City. It shows they can play. Their recent form has been good. Four wins in a row without conceding a goal until tonight. Paul Schmeichel. And straight away again. This is where the danger is. And Giggs, he's one-on-one, -on -one, and Ryan Giggs might go all the way from Schmeichel's throw. And he's going to have to leave it to Andy Cole, who tries to curl one in. And although it goes over, yet another clear warning there to York City. Well, it was the same move they used it just earlier in the game. Schmeichel gets it, knocks it out to Giggs, and he is a run at the defenders, and it was tremendous skill. I thought possibly here, the defender actually just got a little tickle on it. I thought, and then Cole looked for the chip. York City nil, Manchester United two, but remember York still lead, 3-2 on aggregate. There's Giggs again, and he's got this one into Cole, he's onside. York desperately funnelling back, and they keep Cole at bay fairly. No complaint from the centre-forward, it was a decent tackle on him that time. No complaints here, John, I think uh, Cole was looking to do one of his little mazy dribbles in the penalty area, and I think it was McMillan that finally got the touch there. He was up on his own, so he decided to have a go, try to take him on. And there you are, it was McMillan who managed to get back.
Manchester United have lost a little bit of fire in the last uh, few minutes. They got those two early goals, and since then they've not found it quite as easy. So it's still an intriguing contest at 3-2 overall in York's favour. That was good ball, winning. So that's Jordan on his way. Nicely slipped out here for Barnes, who's got the confidence to take them on. And Paul Barnes still has a chance, and it's there! York City score! And what a moment! There were two of them in there for it, but that again changes the complexion because Manchester United need to score two now. Well, Barnes, for me, uh, looked dangerous all night, and they come inside there, and at this particular point, when the tackle went in, I do think it was Jordan. Jordan came in and had a kick at it. Both of them together, I think, managed to put the ball in. So they get half a goal each for this one. <laughs> I think Scott Jordan's going to claim it. He hasn't got one this season. It's a great goal to get for your first, isn't it? Paul Barnes was having a little dig at it, but I think it's the right boot of Jordan that dispatches it. Scott Jordan, what a moment for him. 20 years of age, his last goal was against Bournemouth in March. This one means a lot more. Here's Andy Cole at the other end. And Warrington has his hands on this. But a free kick is going to be awarded to Manchester United here inside the York penalty area. Obstruction. As the goalkeeper was trying to get his hands on the ball, there was an obstruction. And that is why Manchester United have a chance to re-establish a two-goal lead. Remember, they've got to win now 4-1 here to go through on away goals. Scholes and Cantona will fancy this. It could be Cantona, chip, save, and out. They didn't do that very well. Well done, Andy Warrington. That was a great save. The youngster did well there. First chance Cantona has had, and in a way he tried to be too delicate. I think he might be better advised to smash it in. Well, he was trying to be a bit clever here. Look, just chip it over, just dink it over the wall in the corner, and the goalkeeper read it. Let's have a look at this goal again. That's Scott Jordan who started the move, then Barnes. Yes, and we'll just see you now. Bruce comes sliding in there. Barnes gets the break. Well. Yeah, they went to Jordan. I think they went to Jordan. Alex Ferguson's decided that that's the only place to be now, with his team back in trouble. Peveril, off he goes. Gigs chasing. Well, there's some real method, there's some neat approach play from York at the moment. They're not overawed anymore. And it's half-time at Bootham Crescent. We've had the first 45 minutes of the cup tie of the season, and the scenario is still perfect. Paul Scholes, in the first few minutes of this game, gave Manchester United the lift they were looking for. Terry Cook added a second goal with only 12 minutes played. But then Scott Jordan, with a considerable assist from Paul Barnes, has really hauled York back into the match on the evening. York trail 2-1 tonight. Remember, they still lead 4-2 overall. Half-time here, York 1, Manchester United 2. Just before kick-off, let's go down to Nick Powell. Alan, what have you said in there at half-time? Be tight, we'll be sore for 20 minutes if we can. Uh, they've hit us early doors, haven't they? And they've got themselves in, give us a great chance of getting back in. But the goals give us a great opportunity. Uh, Next 20 minutes is vital for us. If we can survive that, we've got a great chance. Thanks, Alan. Cheers. The message is clear from Alan Little. Do not show Manchester United too much, res too much respect and uh, be tight. They were not tight in the opening 20 minutes. But to uh, my word, how York City have come back into this match tonight. <laughs> An undignified scramble by Peter Schmeichel, who sees the funny side of it. Saint, do you agree with uh, Alan Little's assessment? Well, exactly, I think, John, we were saying that in the first half. Uh, United came out, and uh, I think they were very nervous, York City, in the first 20 minutes, and I think the occasion sort of got to them, but, uh, you know, after, after losing two goals, they came back and they've really played well. 
And to be fair, you can see them getting more goals the way they've played. That's a difficult ball for Andy Warrington, and he's, he slipped. And it might yet come to Ryan Giggs to blast one in, but straight into the crowd. Well, that's what you don't want, as mistakes like that, John, in the early minutes of the game. And I mean, it was a terrible mix-up, wasn't it? There was a ball back to the goalkeeper. Not a good ball at all. Never gave Andy a real chance there. He slips under the conditions are bad. The ball falls across the pitch there to Giggs, and really, that wasn't far away. Millen slips it down the line. Williams into the foot of Peveril. And still Nicky Peveril races into the Manchester United penalty area. Tries to apply pressure on Pallister. Does a good job again. Another good attack by York City. And uh, they really are putting the passes in now, John. They're looking far more confident. Manchester United certainly have a big job on their hands yet. They're two goals behind on aggregate, and York are attacking them. With uh, verve and purpose, and Peveril again does a great job. Here's a chance at the back stick. Oh, it was headed down by Jordan. And Manchester United in a little bit of disarray there at the back. That's a brilliant header out of defence, straight to Peveril again. And I won't be surprised to see Manchester United make a change before long as Cantona tries to angle this one through for Cole. And Hall. Beckham couldn't get there before Atkin uh, put the ball out of play. Paul Atkin uh, playing a bit further back in this half. Manchester United are trying to make a substitution and it's the scorer of their second goal, Terry Cook, who is going off. In fairness, he's not really got into the game a great deal tonight. Now it's Roy Keane, another international coming on. So the value of the team soars again. Giggs, long, just away in time by Tuttle with uh, Steve Bruce behind him. Well, that shows how seriously Alex Ferguson and Manchester United are taking this competition, bringing on Roy Keane. When there's talk of him having an injury, and perhaps a need for an operation shortly. Shot on goal here, and it whistles wide. Not by uh, a great deal from the man who's only just come on, Roy Keane. Well, I saw Keane uh, before the game, a good half hour or so before the game, having a, a fitness test, and uh, it was obviously decided he wasn't fit for the 90 minutes, but... Uh, they brought him on, as you say, John, because that's, it is serious now. Warrington had it covered. Well, it wasn't a bad effort for his first kick. Beckham. Keane very much the link man here. To Cantona. Haven't got very far yet. Now it's into the foot of Giggs. Lovely touch from him. Scholes, Cantona, Cole. And uh, Andy Warrington. Very easy save. And Andy Cole really hasn't sparkled much in the second half. Well, it really hasn't been getting much of a service. I, I do think that Manchester United are just trying to over-elaborate a little bit. You know, they're looking for the extra pass. They're looking for the little flicks in the back heels. Peveril, he's got goal side here. And there's a man bound in the middle if he could just find him. And he's held it up intelligently. That was the other option for him. Now Pepper might go and uh, have a crack at goal. Well, he's got into the penalty area. And it was York who over-elaborated that time. Manchester United was certainly caught out. Well, they are getting caught out on the break. There's so many Manchester United players staying upfield. Cantona. Great tackle on him. But Keane knocks one across there. Rested down. You could see the frustration on Paul Scholes' face over the far side when the ball didn't get to him. And even more now as Tuttle runs it away from Andy Cole. Important phase of the game, this if York can hold out for another 10 or 15 minutes, Manchester United might well begin to panic. Even a team as great as them does do in this situation. Scholes now, the one who started the night so brightly for them, Cantona! That was a good try. Maybe that on another night it would have gone in. Lovely bit of skill there from Cantona, on the volley there, got himself side on and woof just across the face of the goal, just didn't quite get the angle right, but 
I mean, he hasn't done much tonight at all, but you can see there that if you give him half a chance. And Alex Ferguson again is on his feet in the uh, dugout next to Alan Little. There's Little on his feet. Ferguson's just sat down again, but he was looking at his watch and pointing to the player, saying, come on, look, there he is again. How long have we got? Not very long to stay in the competition. Is it really going to be York's glory night? They won't mind losing on the night if they win overall, that is for sure. Gary Neville. Fine ball, picking out Cantona. Good header from him. Cole into the area. Turns well, gets the shot in. Side netting. That's the kind of thing he does ever so well, isn't it? He can turn in very tight areas and, you know, he's got a quick trigger, gets the ball in. Nice ball from Cantona here. Just laid it into his part, nice header. Cole battling for it, turns inside, and there's a shot. It's York's turn now, as they break sharply, and there are two in the middle asking for it. And, uh, well, there's only one man who's going to claim that, and that's the big fella in goal. And he really does have the best clearing throw of anybody in the country. But Manchester United made nothing of it. Schmeichel's a top-class act. I'm sure he's going to go up for a Manchester United corner before long. There's a danger here to York City. Skulls will try the long-range shot. Not a good one. They're getting desperate. Well, frustration starting to creep in, I would think. And as I say, and you know, in the closing minutes, they'll get they'll get little half chances. And but if they go snatching at it like that, there'll be nothing for them. Schmeichel. Nicely kept in, Cantona, taking his time to get past Jordan, and the nice back heel, Keane. If Manchester United do get one, mind you now, we're in for a terrific last few minutes in this game. Cole, he mustn't give away a penalty, and here's a chance for Scholes, and he's got that goal. Scholes is second. Well, he's lethal from that sort of a range. And you've just got the feeling that something had to break sometime. Well, they got that little break that you were talking about, John. You know, Cole with his back to goal again, gets a turn. But they'd won the ball back here, and it just fell nicely for Scholes. You know, he's on the edge of the box, and he got a slight deflection as well, and uh, the goalkeeper made a despairing dive for it. But you'll see he gets a little deflection here. And in the corner. So, second goal on the night for Paul Scholes, six for him now this season, it's 3-1 Manchester United, it's 4-3 to York overall. How critical might that one home goal be? And they won't care who scored it. Now they've got to dig in. York City have really got to concentrate now, the remaining minutes of this game. I thought there before they were getting a little bit slack and uh, they've been punished for it, now they've got to dig in, everybody's got to work really hard. They have nine minutes to hang on to that precious one goal that they've got. Of course, the onus is still on Manchester United. They still have to come and get one more goal. Well, he thought it was slipping away a few moments ago. Cantona slips that one out for Giggs. Imminent danger again to York City, and Scholes is in! Oh, so, so close to a hat-trick. So it really is all happening at Bootham Crescent. Dramatic finish to the game. Well, this is going to be nail-baiting time here. Scholes, actually, probably a better chance uh, than the earlier one. You see as he gets played across here, he's right in front of goal. All he needed was a clean contact. from Philip Neville and it's put behind by Barris for the corner well it's ex exactly what we expected a grandstand finish to the game Manchester United throwing everything including Peter Schmeichel at York City can he do it two weeks running the big Danish goalkeeper will look to get the header but again it's a shocking delivery and he's got to charge all the way back 
He'll be disappointed about that. And Bruce just fails to control it first time. Somebody ought to shoot now. Smeichel's still on his way back. <laughs> a little earlier and Barnes might have tried to chip him. As it is, he's played a glorious ball out there for Williams. And Schmeichel's back in his rightful position. Jordan, intelligent pass. Williams does the right thing too. How well he's done for a teenager. And how well Peveril's done there. Named uh, as man of the match, Nicky Peveril. And they've got to concentrate in defence here. That's OK for a Warrington. Only just. Cole coming in on him. Warrington took a full boot, I fancy, there. And uh, he's all right. Great relief. And what a great roar will go for around Booth and Crescent if York can hold on now. I'm going to keep you in suspense. We don't know how long there is. Here's Barnes. Oh, he was almost in behind Pallister, and that would have been a crushing blow to Manchester United. They reckon they lost £6 million going out of the UEFA Cup last week. They stand to lose a bob or two more if they go out of the Coca-Cola competition tonight. But it's not all over yet for Brian Kidd and Alex Ferguson. They do have a throw in. They need a goal to take the time to extra time. Gary Neville. Bruce plays the right ball for Giggs. Everybody's in there, and it's going to be too far again. Giggs again, a bad ball. How frustrating when this lad with all his talent can do things like that. I mean, everybody's in there. All they want is just a little ball in there so that somebody can go in and have a challenge on it, and he just knocks it big. It's ironic because every other one he's hit in tonight has been too short. Well, he's hit all the corners in the near post. And the York fans are singing for all they're worth at the moment. And, uh, Paul should be able to deal with this all right. He does. That's where all the anxiety is. I never think there's any disgrace in being beaten by anybody, but it does stick with the club for a long time when... They are beaten by one of the lesser lights. And uh, Manchester United may just have given themselves too much to do in this second leg, having lost the first 3-0. One of the great cup shocks uh, of all time in the competition. It's not over yet. Keane knocks one in low. Oh, he got trapped up in his feet. And uh, that would have been uh, a shocking way for York to have conceded a a fourth goal, they're still here United and a nudge there and referee Winter awards the free kick and uh, typically York are going to make a substitution right at the end here just to take the steam out of the situation and you can't blame them for that and they'll bring on uh, Paul Baker who's seen it all before he's been around the football league scene for several years Hartlepool, Carlisle Chillingham and he comes on for what could be a very glorious last couple of minutes. And he's taken Paul Barnes off, I don't know why, because, I mean, uh, I mean, he's run his socks off, uh, Paul Barnes, had a great game. Well, that may be why, Sainton. Baker is a front player. Maybe they don't need another defender. Peveril again chases, even though it's a lost cause. Schmeichel plays it out. All eyes on the referee, he looks at his watch. And we have moved into time added on. Is this going to be another of those great footballing nights? York City have beaten the likes of Aston Villa and Arsenal in recent years. But this would be seen as the greatest scalp of all time for the Minstermen. Neville's got no option but to play it back and he does so disastrously. Peveril could really finish it now. And it's behind the goal. He really had the chance to make himself an all-time hero. And Ferguson knows it. Peveril knows it. 
We all know it. Everybody in the ground knows it. He had two players up alongside him. He just needs to knock it square to them. Watch this. Look at that. All he needs to do is square it there. Oh, what gone, a chance. Gone for the glory. And uh, it means that Manchester United have one last chance. Mr. Winter looks at the watch again. Neville crosses one deep. Headed back into the danger zone. It's away. And that's good enough for York. And that's a nice little bit of skill from Paul Baker. And Peverell's got another running chance down the other touch line. And Bruce slides in and wins the ball well. Oh, come on, Mr. Winter, shout the York fans. Giggs stabs it in. McMillan's just got to put this out of the ground. Throw in for Manchester United. Suspense to the end at Bootham Crescent. But Alex Ferguson's men, beaten in the UEFA Cup a week ago, are now on the verge of going out of the Coca-Cola Cup. And what a roar they will be if York City knock them out. Pallister was up there, it's out from Tuttle. Up goes Schmeichel again. He's got to do it. Desperation now for Manchester United. He's given a throw in the other way, I think. No, it's not. It's another. It's a substitute coming yes. up for York. <laughs> Goodness me! The tension oh. in this ground is incredible. The, the heart is really pounding, isn't it? They take off Peverell, who's run his socks off, and he gets a big pat on the back from Alan Little. Here comes Glenn Naylor. Well, surely not now. Manchester United are so close to going out of the Coca-Cola Cup, and that is it. Famous, famous night indeed for York City of the second division they have knocked Manchester United out of the Coca-Cola Cup applause for Alan Little and for the York City heroes but desperation for Alex Ferguson and Manchester United it's York's night Tuttle the captain it's the greatest night of his footballing career as it has to be for all of these York players none of whom had ever played against Manchester United until two weeks ago they did the job at Old Trafford with a 3-0 success which stunned the whole world of football and they finished the job tonight despite losing 3-1 here and you can see how disconsolate the Manchester United players are. They gave themselves too big a mountain to climb and the 19-year-old goalkeeper Andy Warrington will long remember his debut in senior football. The fans swarm onto the field, and it's marvellous to be a part of it. Let's go down to Nick Powell on the touchline. Well, guys, you can't beat a night like that, can you? Oh, it's brilliant. Obviously, we conceded too early on, which made it difficult, but we fought back brilliant, got ourselves back in it, and we've ran our hearts out. The crowd have been brilliant, you hear them. What did you say at half-time? Uh, just kept back doing what we did at the end, you know? We started turning them around and getting down the sides, and we caused them problems. You nearly scored the goal yourself, or did you score the goal yourself? I'm pointing claim to that. Me and Scott don't really know. We'll have a look at yours tonight and see who you think. Small celebration tonight? Oh, big celebration. Well, big ball. Thank you. So, scenes of jubilation, unparalleled scenes, I would think, at Bootham Crescent. York City have completed the job. They have slain the giant. It's York City 1, Manchester United 3 on the night. It's York 4-3 overall. York go through to the next round. Manchester United go out. Let's not forget Dean Kindly, you had to watch, what was it like? Uh, it was more nervous sitting and watching really, but um, just delighted for the lads, fantastic. I mean, I've discharged myself from hospital, I've got to go back at 10 o'clock, so uh, get me get me face done, but fantastic for the lads, brilliant. Brilliant, super. Who do you want in the next round? Anybody? Hi. Newcastle. Thanks. Were you nervous? Uh, yeah, I was a bit nervous, yeah. I'll be lying for some of And now are you feeling after 15 minutes? Oh, I thought full game was open, I thought that's how it was going to be, but the lads have stuck to the job, they played it brilliantly. Hit them on the great ones, and that's all it needed. What did you all say to each other at that point when you were really looked down? Well, we were just trying to get each other going, you know, um, not get your heads down, and just keep it going. And we've got the breakthrough. Got the goal. Uh, tell us about the goal, because Paul Barnes says it's his goal. I don't know, I just lost one for her. I don't know who got the last two. So I'm really bothered. Did that goal change your half-time talk? 
Yes, it did a wee bit. Um, it was a lifesaver for us, wasn't it, really? Um, I just I just thought it was never going to end at 2-0. I thought there was going to be three, there could be four, and we'd have been out of it. But, you know, we've got a goal, and I think that pegged them back again. You know, I look at Man United, and when they concede, at the moment, they seem to be sagging back a little bit. Uh, and that, that was the breather we needed. Right at the end, you've got a few grey hairs. I think you might have got a few more tonight. Yeah, there, there were sort of blank faces out there. You know, the, the lads were away with us, you know, and the, there wasn't a lot of quality on our play. Uh, but we got away with it. What does it mean to the club to have a scout like Manchester United? I think I think the get through is even more important. Um, to be fair, we did the job in the first leg. It was a super first leg. We played some great football, as everyone knows. We got it then. Uh, tonight doesn't really matter because you know, we've passed and we've gone through. I think it mattered to a few thousand folk in the ground, though, didn't it? Yeah, I think they were as edgy as me, weren't they? I think there were spells when it was very quiet out there. Um, and as I say, they go forward in the superb. But their final ball, to be fair, or the final cross, just wasn't their night. The atmosphere between now and the next round uh, is going to be something as well. I mean, people often pass you in the street. I know you say here, and mm. you don't talk about football. They're going to be talking about it now. Yeah, the place is alive, isn't it? Um, and it will continue to be alive because the, 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 the media will be here over the next couple of weeks. Uh, if we get a big tie as well, uh, I think it will keep the season going for us. And I think we'll only get better. I was told you wanted Newcastle United. Newcastle, Aston Villa, that's what I want. Don't want much, do I? <laughs> well done. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. But the drama wasn't confined to Boot and Crescent. Stay tuned for goals from five other games featuring our region's teams and all the results in a couple of minutes.